Every week I try to bring you great information on photography for free. In return, all I ask is that you watch this video because it's probably more important than any other video I've ever made. If you appreciate what we do, then please see this video through to the end. Now, as photographers, we can't afford to neglect the world around us in a selfish way. When you think about it, as photographers, many of us rely on the natural beauty of the world through landscapes, nature, wildlife, and even macro photography. We use beautiful locations for fashion images. Much of what we do relies on the beauty of our planet. For other photographers and videographers, the health of the oceans and the underwater world are also key to our work. But right now, our planet is under attack. It's been, and continues to be, decimated by us, humans. As a photographer, I've witnessed firsthand the devastating effects of human exploitation, from deforestation in Borneo to the complete disappearance of turtles and large fish species on the same reefs in just the space of a decade. And I think the COVID situation has highlighted to many our delicate relationship with nature. Now, in a recent documentary, David Attenborough, A Life on Our Planet, has been the topic of much discussion. And having watched it, I decided it was something the team here would benefit from watching too. We took an afternoon to watch the eye-opening witness statement from the BBC broadcaster that is currently streaming on Netflix. The film documents the devastating changes to our wilderness that Attenborough has personally witnessed over his 60-year career. Whilst breathtaking and astounding, one thing that stood out for me was that this documentary failed to offer much uh, about what we could do on a personal level. It highlighted the problems of habitat loss, overfishing, energy consumption, and rising levels of pollution, and stressed the importance of rewilding our planet. But whilst providing information about changing our diets and reducing waste, I felt it didn't provide enough detail on how or where we could find further information to take action. So as a responsible business, we decided to take action for ourselves and have made some significant changes. And this has included changing all of our studio lighting to low energy LED bay lights. We've also switched our heating to lower energy infrared, and we have a firm recycling policy. Many of our staff have switched to largely vegetarian diets and we've encouraged forms of zero carbon transport for commuting to work. To help further, we thought we'd put together some useful resources that will help provide information and possible solutions to some of the major issues covered in the documentary. And I would thoroughly encourage you to watch the documentary yourself as it is a real eye opener and comes directly from the experiences of one of the most respected and trustworthy people in that field. But first, let's look at four of the key problems and what we can all do to help. Number one, habitat loss and deforestation, the causes. In the 94 years since David Attenborough was born, the world's population has more than tripled, while our wilderness has shrunk from 66% to just 35%. Farming, palm oil production and urban development are just some of the reasons for this. The solutions. So what can we do to help? Well, we can help reduce our impact by switching to more plant-based diets and reducing our intake of meat especially beef. Beef farming consumes vast amounts of land compared to its yield. And we can also take steps to ensure that the meat we do eat is from well-managed sources that use sustainable farming practices. Avoiding products that use palm oil is another step we can take. By reducing our demand for these products, we'll be helping to reduce deforestation. Cutting your meat consumption by half 
or even a third will hugely benefit the planet. I've put links below this video and on our blog where you can find out more. Number two, overfishing the causes. The issue of overfishing goes back as far as the 1800s, when human demand for blubber decimated the whale population. Now, 200 years later, a lack of regulation has left many of our fish species vulnerable to large-scale industrial fishing practices, resulting in depleted populations and unbalanced ecosystems. Industrial fishing practices include factory ships using nets 11 kilometers across and some so deep that entire swathes of the seabed are also destroyed. Millions of unwanted species such as turtles, dolphins and other cetaceans get trapped in these nets and also die, meaning the diversity of our ocean species is such now that there is a huge imbalance in the food chain with jellyfish and squid populations soaring as they see their predator numbers depleted. The Solutions as individuals, we can ensure that the fish we eat is also from sustainable sources. Look out for labels on food packaging that indicate well-managed sustainable fisheries. We also need to promote dedicated no-fish zones. As mentioned in the documentary, these provide safe areas for fish populations to recover and, as a result, help provide sustainable fishing in the adjacent areas. Again, we've put links below and on our blog to the websites where you can find out more information. Number three, individual carbon emissions and global warming. The causes. That quick five minute drive to the shops, that outside light left on last night, that pair of shoes that you needed. These small things all contribute to the carbon emissions that are increasing and contribute to global warming. CO2 levels in the atmosphere are now higher than they have been for 800,000 years. The last time they were this high, the polar regions had no ice. And whilst that might sound like an interesting prospect, keep in mind that sea levels were also 30 meters higher, which would put every coastal city on Earth from New York to Sydney underwater. And although the Earth's climate has fluctuated many times, from before the era of the dinosaurs to now, it has never done so in such a short period of time. Planetary temperatures have changed before, but it's done so over hundreds of thousands of years, not just a few decades. These longer shifts in climate change have always allowed life to evolve with them. But now animals such as walrus, polar bears, albatross and penguins are unable to keep pace with this rapid adjustment of their habitat and biosphere. The solutions. We can reduce our carbon emissions in almost every aspect of our day-to-day -day lives. Making small changes to our homes, electricity consumption, water usage and travel choices can make a big difference. Switching to renewable energy sources where possible is another way we can make a difference. We can also invest in or choose banks or pension schemes that invest in renewable and sustainable energy sources. We can switch to more eco-friendly transport methods and stop purchasing things we don't really need. These websites will help you find out more and I've put links below this video and on our blog. Number four, land and sea pollution, the causes. As the human population, which currently stands at about 7.8 billion, continues to grow, it was just 3.7 billion 60 years ago, as it grows, so does the amount of waste we produce. This waste is overwhelming on our land and our oceans, with various forms of pollution now present in the most remote areas of every continent and the deepest parts of the ocean. Last year, in response to the problem, I created an image that represented the mess we are leaving to future generations and to help raise awareness of the problem of marine pollution. But we can all do more. The solutions. 
Key to reducing any form of pollution and to help ease the burden on our planet in general is to avoid waste. There are numerous ways we can do this, one of which is to reduce our use of non-recyclable or non-decomposable plastics and materials. Recycling and reusing are two other ways that can help reduce pollution. In addition to reducing the number of single-use plastics in circulation, recycling and reusing help conserve natural resources and saves energy. We also need to lobby our governments to invest more in recycling plants and dissuade them from shipping our waste to other countries to deal with. These are some of the websites with further information and again, I've put links below this video and you can find them on our blog. A life on our planet paints a desperate picture, but as Attenborough points out, there is still time for us to fix things, but we can't wait for government action or intervention, simply because governments don't want to be the ones to implement anything considered draconian or unpopular. And given their short stay in power, they often don't get to implement things that will result in lasting change. The problems highlighted in this video and the changes we can make are small things that we can all do. But if we all do, then they are things that will make a big difference. It's not time to talk about it. That time has passed. It's time to start doing before it really is too late. And we all need to play our part, or we might just find that there's really not so many things nice left to photograph. Thanks for listening.